And what I realized fairly early on is that always at work, there were people just waiting for me to slip up. Now, I've told you before, before I became a Christian, every other word out of my mouth was not pleasant, was a swear word, and God changed it like that. As soon as I became a Christian, I could count on two hands the amount of times I've sworn since then, and it was all in the first kind of six months or year as I learned a new language. I learned to speak properly again. But I had people years later in my employment saying, oh, you just said the whatever word. I said, no, I didn't. But they would try and hear something that wasn't there. Say, oh, you just did that. Because people sometimes are almost waiting for us to make a mistake and reading things into, reading things that aren't there. And I had a story once, someone said to me, a situation to happen and someone said to me God is more interested in your character than your comfort I thought thanks for that I went to a conference I was staying with someone I'd never met met her um I was introduced to her I stayed at her house that night Christian girl but all I'm going to say is I didn't like what I saw going on So in the morning, while she was still asleep, I packed my bags in my room and I moved out. And I turned up at this conference thinking, well, I'm here for a week and now I have nowhere to stay and I don't really have the money for a hotel. And I went and talked to a friend and I was expecting him to say, oh, isn't that awful? Yeah, I feel really bad for you. I'm sorry that happened. He said, God is more interested in your character than your comfort. Wasn't expecting that that morning. But do you know what? I thought, absolutely right. God is interested in my character. And God did something through that. He spoke to me, and I learned a lot through it, and also learned a little bit more wisdom each time. And I'm just going to share a little bit from John chapter 15. John chapter 15 talks about, it's the story about the vine. Jesus is talking, and John chapter 15, verses 1 to 17. Jesus says throughout this chapter that we are to remain in him. I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. And this brings great glory to my Father. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. And I have told you these things so that you may be filled with joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. You didn't choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and bear lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask using my name. And this is my commandment, love one another. The world would love you as one of its own if you belonged to it. But you are no longer part of the world. Verse 19, I chose you to come out of the world. Now, there is, 
there are many messages in that passage. And I just want to look at the simple one. Abide, well, it's not really simple. It is. Abiding in Christ. Because if we truly abide in Christ and spend time with him, you know, if, if we are Christians and we have Christ living in us, we are in the world, but we're called to be not of the world. And you can be a Christian. I always like to know, you know, I love church. I've loved church since the minute I got saved. And I, I love Sundays and I love coming together and I love praying and, and being with everyone and worshipping and seeing people and hearing the word. But for me, what does my Christianity look like on a Monday? For me, once, I've shared this before, when my boss, not any bosses here, not a Christian boss, I'll add, asked me to lie for him on behalf of the company. What was I to do in that sense? What did I do about my integrity in that situation when my boss was saying something and I knew it didn't line up with the word of God? And I sat there, and if you haven't heard this, I sat there and I deliberated and I deliberated and I thought, I've never had this situation happen before, Lord. Because sometimes you'll end up in situations and you'll just think, I have not been this way before. What do I do? Help. If it was a friend saying, I want you to lie for me, well, you can tell your friend, thanks, but you know me better than that. When it's your boss asking you to do something, I was like, I'm paid to work for this guy. I could lose my job over doing what the Bible says, effectively. Do not lie. So I sat there. And I deliberated, and he said to me, you're having a real hard time with this, aren't you? I said, yep. And I sat there, and he said, well, can't you just say you're at a dentist appointment, you know, or something? I said, if I say that, I will have to ring my dentist, make an appointment, go to the dentist. I like going to the dentist, so it's not too much of a hardship for me, unlike Pastor Keith, who shared this morning. (laughs) But it would mean going to the dentist. And he said, really? I said, yes. And then I said this line, I don't know where I'd heard it from, but it sounded good at the time, so I remembered it. I said, I won't lie for you, but I won't lie to you either. And I chose to tell the truth. And I think he respected me for it. I hope he did. (laughs) But In this passage, the word says, abide. And that one of Jesus' favorite words was Greek word, meno, which often translated rem- means remain, stay, or abide. And it describes a profound, intimate, and enduring relationship. And when Jesus said, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. The idea is that a disciple's life is fully formed by the word of God, by the word of Jesus what he says. He said to the people that believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings in John 8, 31. And he said, John 17, 21, I pray that they may all be one just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so the world will believe that you sent me. Now, I'm always challenged by that line that we might be the only Jesus that some people will meet. I think, dear Lord, help me. (laughs) If I'm the only Jesus, I pray that they meet the real Jesus instead because, you know, but we carry, we have Christ in us. And if we're going about our daily life and we're living a life of integrity and character, it should be showing through. 